Hello and welcome back to the Hand of Fate 2 and my controller buttons being loud. Anyway, a couple people said death and someone said justice. So that is the order we will do them in because why the heck not? Uh, I don't... I think there might be another set of like four or five uh, challenges that are left to unlock on the screen, so we have quite a bit left to go. Surprising amount, actually. I didn't think the game was going to be quite this long, but, you know, every challenge is like an hour long, so that kind of helps quite a lot. We're going to do a recommended, because why not? Let's see what we got. Give us the Wanda. Armor break. Huge success. Hold on. What is huge success? Duplicate a card in any chance game. Hmm. That melee tank and armor break is actually pretty good. She would be good against, uh... <clears throat> sorry. Dying, apparently. She would be good against, uh... Corrupted enemies. Because they're so... Well, Corrupted and Empire, actually, because she uh, guard breaks. Reaper's Arrow. Raising max life above 130. For many, the card of I meant to check the rest of the cards, by the way. Rather than mortality. For you, we will see. Instead, I accidentally continued. Hooray! Really good at buttons. That's okay. Do you hear them approaching? The whisper upon the winds. Dark forces ride forth to stop you. A filthy street urchin approaches you in a busy town market to ask. You're the one who bound a mage and broke the raid leader of the north, aren't you? I heard some bad men talking about you. Give us a bit of bread, they'll let you in on a secret. She smiles with her few remaining teeth and stretches out her hands. Uh, you hand over a scrap of bread, which she quickly shoves into her mouth. Moments later, she gulps and smiles again. Well, you prompt her. Oh, I heard that someone's offered a lot of gold to have you killed, she remarks while picking her teeth. Now the whole guild wants in on it. Every thief from here to the Empire's Edge will be after you. They even sent for some fancy assassin. THE fancy assassin. The one they call the Reaper. Cause he's pretty good at his job, eh? Too bad, buddy. You seemed nice, the girl remarks, patting your hand. Maybe you'll find a way to survive, but I doubt it. So in order to surprise the Reaper, we have to have 170 max life, which is probably how we get the gold clear. I have a distinct feeling that's going to be really, really, really hard, given our and cards. Eating plants. I can't say I blame them. High on a misty mountaintop, you discover a vicious-looking plant. Its gaping mouth looks more like more than capable of shredding you to pieces. Uh, so we can throw a piece of equipment to distract it. Uh, do I have equipment? I do. I have a helmet. What does the helmet do? The helmet has a token, and the armor does not. I think the leather armor is probably better than the battered helm, but the helmet has a token, so. We can actually see, hold on. Upgrade this item at the blacksmith to unlock the token. Oh, you know what? Having this helmet would, uh... No, we already had the helmet, didn't we? No, did we? I don't know. It was a shield we were missing for the ogre, that's right. Let's get rid of the uh, leather armor, just in case we can upgrade that helmet. You launch your leather armor at the creature. Fruit is especially delicious, leaving you feeling refreshed and vigorous. So 10 max life, 10 more max life. This is already going quite well. So we almost have 130 to complete the silver, assuming we don't lose any. Death comes closer and closer. Can you hear it? Nope. With the threat of assassination looming like a dark cloud, you seek solace in a remote inn known as the Flailing Dragon. Few patrons visit this night, 
and you fall into conversation with the innkeeper. Over a few ales, you reveal to him your current predicament. The innkeeper sighs. I'm afraid there's little I can do other than heal you up whenever you visit. So we can go to the next level, but we're not done here yet. We must explore the maps. A gang of thieves. Not too late to plan better. Are you sure about that? A pair of shady characters emerge from the shadows to block your path. Six of them. That's slightly more. The Empire is offering a pretty price for your head, adventure. One of the men remarks while casually inspecting his blade. Nothing personal, the other adds as they advance towards you. Thieves evade heavy weapons. I have a heavy weapon equipped, so we should fix that. Let's see what we can do here. There's six of them. So it's really quite likely I'll end up taking damage, especially since this is the first time I've played this in... I don't know... Several days. Maybe... Sort of close to a week, but not a week. Certainly not a week. So I'll have to actually get used to button pressing again. Plus my volume is way too loud. Like, way too loud. I thought he was attacking, so I blocked. Oh, he's dead. Haha, -ha, fool. Alright, so that went quite well. Let me lower my volume. Hopefully that doesn't screw with uh, audio settings later. I also need to do something real quick. Real quick, like an in a hurry. Uh... There we go. There's my mouse. Hello! You can't avoid your fate forever. One man gasps as he falls. I wanted to make sure I read that before I clicked back into the game in case it uh, advanced to the text. You spend a little time searching the fallen before leaving discreetly. Oh, we get a Platinum 1 equipment from 3. We don't get a Platinum equipment, but... So Gambler's Jewel is really good. Trader's Urge, eh. Billy Clubs, we're fighting thieves, so Billy Clubs will also be really good. Am I gonna need a Gambler's Jewel? See, if I knew what cards I had in the deck, I'd probably have a better idea if I needed the Gambler's Jewel. I suppose there's a there's a appeal to doing it blind, having it recommend a deck and then not looking at the deck and just going into the story blind. Gambler's Jewel is so good. Let's let's take the Gambler's Jewel. I can work around having low damage on my weapons. We get seven food, which is good. We don't want to starve to death. You'd be right to be suspicious, but then where is altruism in today's world? fallen as far away as hope. While roaming the dark alleyways of the capital, you see a suspicious group traveling in your direction. So, Aid of Blight. Dragging a locked chest, we've seen this one before. In the other direction, we spy an Armor of Gluttony, which I don't really care for. You know we've never taken the suspiciously unguarded equipment path. Gluttony doesn't... does Gluttony help us? Armor of Gluttony? I can't remember exactly what that does. I don't think it's really that big of a deal. Let's go for the visible enemies with the locked chest. So you approach them into the chest, they drop their cargo, draw their blade. I forgot to change my equipment. Whoops, a daisy. It's just a uh, aid of blight. So I don't think it'll matter too much that I still have daggers equipped. I think in this case, for Blight, I think you want a heavy weapon? Are you gonna attack or just walk towards me? Look at that stun. The Blight appear to be really strong against uh, Coldbjorn here because he seems to die really fast against them. 
Don't sword and board or heavy weapons with these guys. I never remember. That was a little bit weird. No, I totally blocked that. I want a refund. The fact that you can revive on the fly mid attack animation for something else is really nice. It's nice that I don't have to stop for animation to get him up. Makes it maybe a little bit unbalanced that you can just get your companion up instantly without stopping something, but you know. You gain four fame. You also get 15 life with the health potion, not max life. Secret compartment. Well, it's a good thing we got the gambler's ring, didn't we? Back or is it, I should say. I hope you have learned to be their master. We won anyway, but you know, the plus two, even even if we, you know, needed it, it's there. So we find uh, Felvin's favor. Who can say? So we can equip it. So an enemy is randomly highlighted. If that enemy is killed first, gain plus five life, not max life. Max life would be crazy. So there's really no reason not to equip this. It has more defense, but it also has extremely good bonuses. That's probably a really great helmet. So let's I'm go ahead and see what's going on here. This process will teach you something. Something about how the game is crafted and how the rules abide. Perhaps something about sleeping gently while deadly assassins are on your tail, too. Perhaps. Let's ask about the Reaper. I've heard of this assassin. Even kings once feared him, though few could afford his services. If he hunts you, and you are in dire peril indeed. Who now would possess the gold necessary to command him? Unless it is the Emperor himself. Aha! Aha, aha. Uh, ask about the innkeeper's past. I was a great magician once, working for the king himself, the man exclaims, gazing into the fireplace wistfully. Of course, that was before the empire. These days you can get hung for casting anything more than a simple healing spell. Even that in the wrong places. So let's turn in for the night, go to the next level. You bid the innkeeper good night and arise in the morning, leaving fully refreshed. Healing, healing in a place like this always carries a price. I could buy... We don't have a lot of gold. I think I'd rather buy food more than anything else. Same prices as anywhere. We'll take the, the 10 for 3. 3 for 10. However that goes. What is it you seek? What What's in here for buy healing? Okay. So there's no option for max life. What about buy information? 5 gold? I can ask the whispers. I can ask the whispers of their travels. Probably map reveal. We don't have gold anyway. I just wanted to see what it was. Oh, the shrine. Must. May you receive better results from them than I have in turn. Quest brings you to a remote shrine. You kneel. Should be easy enough to get above eleven, considering with the ring we have. There you go. Easy. Plus we have Cold Bjorn, so we can fourth right, fourth You're dice. Learning. Words are hard. Sunshine appears through a break in the clouds. We get 15 max life, 10 more max life. So we can survive the Reaper. Hopefully we don't lose any max life at some point here. We need 20 more max life to surprise the Reaper. Or the gold clear, I assume. We could sell that helmet. It's only three though. Let's do it. I don't think we're going to come across the blacksmith in order to get the token off of that, so... We'll sell the equipment, leave, there's nothing we can buy. Temple prayers! Well, I'm disappointed because we could have got a uh, buff. We don't have the gold for it and I don't think... Yeah, we can't go back to it. So that sucks. Now I'm wishing I hadn't bought that food, although food's pretty important. I don't know how much food bonus you cards be we have. More careful, given the price on your head. 
thieves slink from the shadows with murder in their eyes. So six of greed and a silencer of greed card, which I think is a couple of them. Like two or three. I don't remember how many comes with the silencer card. We still have just the basic... It's three of them. We still have just the basic weapons. That was just bad on my part right there. Preferably want the silencers down first because, you know, not that it apparently matters. Alright, game. Because, for fuck's sake, I'm hitting the button apparently just really badly. The silencers are the only things here that have the ability to deal damage through a block. Everything else here can just be blocked forever. My companion is down, apparently. Let us resolve this. Hey, bud. How's it going? See, this is... Oh, never mind. I'm talking shit, and then I got hit immediately. Twice, in fact. I'm doing really, really badly. And I'm embarrassed. Because we really shouldn't... Right, that one. We shouldn't have taken any hits except for probably that one. I'll admit that that attack is an attack I was probably going to take damage on. Because I didn't even see him coming, but the rest of this fight, that was just awful. I'm embarrassed, to be honest. I was getting greedy and not paying attention, talking shit. Can't avoid your fate forever, you spend a little time searching. Dark Thirst, which we'll, we're not going to equip it. That damage is really good. Not going to equip it yet. But that's nice to have a high damage weapon if we come across any corrupted or anything like that again. We got 20 healing off of a single food. Why did we get 20 healing? Do we always get 20 healing? No. Normally get 5, don't we? That's a lot of healing. Uh, shopkeeper nods. We could sell the Dark Thirst. I mean, it. it's not good against thieves. But having the money at this point is irrelevant because we can't go back to that shrine and get the buff. Is there any equipment that gives max health? What does this do? It's actually pretty good. More blood. If we had that blessing, if we hadn't if we hadn't bought food, we could have got that blessing and then purchased the ruby ring and we'd have 10 max life. And we'd only need 10 more. Which is against thieves drop gold. That's pretty good. We can't afford it, can we? No. Because this only sells for... Yeah, okay. Should I even bother to buy the ring? Let's, let's do it. Let's sell the Dark Thirst. And then we're going to buy the... No, we're not going to buy the ring because I'm an idiot. God damn it. Well, I'm mad now. All right, well. Welcome to my life. Um, I'm an idiot. How's your day? Why is leave the first option on the list? I'm mad on the internet. Deal no with them exchange. if you will. I would rather leave them be. Well, if I don't give them something, do we just take health, normal damage or we lose max life? I don't know, it's too risky. So we're gonna give them... Oh, Felvin's favor is so good. But I like the gambler's jewel too. Let's give them Felvin's favor. I would have given him Dark Thirst, but I sold that to buy a ring that I never purchased. Ha ah, ha, I'm good at this game. So gain five food, seven more food. I mean, that's a good exchange for the cost of that item, so. This would be plenty of food, Once so. again to the tavern. Once again to await your fates. You return to the flailing dragon and take a chair by the fire. The crowd seems unsettled, speaking with hushed voices and darting glances around the room. Uh, listen to rumors. 
I hear the Reaper has been seen, one lad exclaimed, drawing the attention of the other patrons. His arrow is deadly and never misses and pierces armor and shields, so they say. Okay, are there more rumors? I pity the one the Reaper stalks now. Their days are numbered. Say the Reaper is cursed by the gods to harvest souls for all eternity, a bald man declares ominously. Alright, well, let's turn in for the night. Rather an interesting map layout there, but rather ominous messages. Assassins. The gang of thieves again. I'd hate everything they stood for if it wasn't for their occasional usefulness. So Anarchist agreed, Silencer agreed. Again, I shouldn't be taking damage in these fights, even though my weapon is complete trash. I need better starting weapons and stuff. Although this one, we probably got the, yeah, we got the health bonus at the start. Which is good. Preferably I'd want these anarchists dead just because of the ranged attack. If we can swing it anyway. Easier to deal with the dudes we can see than the anarchists throwing stuff at us from range. There we go. Two left. Hey bud. Once we get in melee, the anarchists are super easy to deal with. It's simply getting to melee. I thought I had a special degree, so I was just walking towards him. No, I hit the button, the swingy swing of my blades, and it didn't do the ow. Didn't do the swingy swing of my special. Alright, that time I actually hit block. Alright, that time I didn't, because it was a tank mission. Now I'm just being garbage again. How's it going? How's your day? Oh no, that didn't hit me, but I'll take it. Hey bud, you gonna swing? There you go. Hey! That was a lot of damage. Well, if we're healing like 20 for per food, then I really don't much care about the health loss, I guess. He is coming, you hear, as the den of battle fades. Spend a little time searching the fallen. One equipment from two. There's a light of truth. We want that or Will of the Emperor. Light of Truth can get me gold if I get finishers on Thieves forever. It's super rare now how much gold it is. This will just kill a thief. Five times, and then it's done. So, I think we're probably going to take Light of Truth. Although, well, how many shops are we possibly going to come across? Let's take Light of Truth. Do you think these poor souls would have turned to a life of crime if they'd known a wizard sitting alone in a tower would go to the trouble of creating a ring solely to cause them pain? I wonder. The ring makes a return. It's more expensive, but I can just sell the light of truth. Yeah, but what's the, what's the chance of us getting a blessing? I mean, I'm going to do it anyway, but honestly, what's the chance of us getting a blessing right now? Unless it counts at zero, but I don't think it does. It does not, obviously. Here is a oh, man hey. with a particular set of powers turned to mere trade. He ought to be bending the powers of the universe to his will, and instead, he serves you. You enter the workshop of the Enchanter. He specializes in adding magical powers to items. There are no suitable equipment cards for upgrading in the inventory. Unfortunate. Friends in high places will take you far these days. So tell me who are you hunting? Thieves? Not an uncommon practice. Billy clubs, we're probably going to be unable to afford them, yeah. These cars will be put back on top. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. So we know the next piece of equipment at the top of the equipment deck is Billy Clubs. That's interesting. General store. Can't afford anything, but whatever. That does mean the Billy Clubs are here, right? No, apparently not. There's Felvin's favor. 
I don't want to buy anything here. Uh, unless you can sell me a blessing, I don't want anything to do with it. Death comes for oh. all of us in time, but some live to defeat it. Your unease grows as you return to the flailing dragon once more. Every shadow and bush seems like it may conceal your hunter. The innkeeper looks up as you enter. Ah, my favorite adventure. It's still alive, I see. He goes on to relate the worrying news that his tavern has come to the Reaper's attention. My sources say he will arrive here sometime tomorrow. Seems your destiny is at hand, warrior. So we're gonna leave, obviously. So we're not done exploring yet, and we don't have enough health. On the longest night of winter, the townsfolk of Stigel set up around a huge bonfire to celebrate the victory of light over darkness. We've had this card before, I think. Well, it offers you a goblet, you politely accept it. Uh, no blessing cards found in inventory. I think you have to give up a blessing there. Spider trap. Good luck taking this token from me. The way you said that. Looking to avoid trouble with a local gang of thieves, you duck into an abandoned warehouse. Creeping among the broken crates and smashed furniture, you suddenly sense movement above you. An enormous spider hangs among the dusty rafters of the building, attending to the still form of a hapless adventurer wrapped in silk and web. Hmm. As you watch, the terrible creature finishes its gruesome meal and, fully fed, retreats into the deeper shadows. Billy Clubs will the Emperor 5 gold. You climb up onto a sturdy ceiling beam and work your way towards the silent and still cocoon. I'm well, not a vain man. You must appreciate that the game, this game, has been my focus for more years than I can count. I have a certain pride regarding its twists and turns. That wasn't actually the card I wanted, but... You cut down the remains of the hapless victim, only to find nothing more than some old boots and some gold pieces. The boots melt away before your eyes into the strength of the spider's caustic saliva, while the gold smokes and hisses until you clear it off with water. The gold is tarnished by the effects of the spider bile, but still usable, you decide. What? But still usable, you decide, as you scurry away from the infested warehouse. So no token, unfortunately. No weapon either is most of the is one of the pure arts. That says little for its practitioners, however. Countless jars and obscure artifacts clutter the room. On a central workbench, a peculiar glass beaker simmers over a flame. Ah, I see you found my laboratory then, a voice exclaims. From behind a pile of dusty books, a robed figure emerges, clad in a pointy hat and a pair of thick spectacles. He smiles. Here to create the elusive elixir of life, or perhaps it is gold you desire. All is possible through alchemy. Alas, I've yet to prove that such things are indeed possible, he explains. No matter. Say, would you care to assist me with my experiment? Yeah, sure. Very well, let's begin. Take a jar and place its contents in the beaker, he says as he dips his quill in an inkwell and prepares to write. Remember, you must keep the elixir pure. You take a, char a jar from the shelf and unscrew the lid. I don't know what any of these do. But I feel like red is probably health. But which red do I want? Red mushrooms? It's like a one-up, right? Oh, I was close. So we got yellow feathers. The jar contains a collection of yellow feathers. You place one in the beaker and it dissolves instantly. The clear liquid gains the faintest tint of yellow. Excellent, the alchemist says as he scrawls feverishly in his ledger. Now I'll pick another. You reach for the next jar. So he said keep it pure. Does this mean we need to keep the color pure? If we need to keep the color pure, we would need one of each color, correct? I believe is what we're trying to go for here. Do we all would do we want three feathers though, or a mix? I don't know. Either way, let's try and not get something yellow. Proceeds to almost get something yellow, so we got a red feather this time. The jar contains dried red feathers. You sprinkle a handful onto the beaker, and they dissolve instantly, tinting the elixir a dull orange. 
Most interesting, the alchemist remarks as he continues to write in the ledger. Now pick one more. So optimally, since I've got two feathers, I'm going to try and get the blue feather. Nope, we're going to get a yellow mushroom. We've ruined it. We got two of one color. Ah, I've ruined it all. Gingerly, you add the yellow mushrooms into the orange flask. The liquid remains unchanged. That might have been a few too many feathers, perhaps, says the alchemist. I've messed up his voice. Looking at the orange mixture through his thick spectacles, he frowns. No, 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 this just won't do. The elixir is spoiled. The alchemist turns to his notes and starts scribbling strange symbols on the page. Whatever could be the cause, he continues. Yes, definitely too much feathers, not enough beetles. As the alchemist continues to mutter to himself, you decide to leave him to his work and continue on your journey. So it looks like we're not getting a gold clear on this. So we missed. There are those moments before death where everything appears to stand still. Can you feel it creeping closer, drawing its breath? Very dramatic. We could have had 10 health from this ring if we had the money for that blessing. We could have had 10 health from the ring. And potentially we could get a health upgrade from that alchemist. I don't know of any other max health upgrades we could have got from this board, but maybe we missed one. But that would have put us at exactly 170, assuming it was 10 for the alchemist. Assuming we'd even get it. It could also just been 20 for the alchemist or something like that. I don't know. Or more. But unfortunately, we're not getting the, the 170, so... Unless there's another map, but I don't think that's the case. In the morning, the innkeeper bids you farewell. Good luck, warrior. You hear no sound as it strikes you. No sound, no warning, not even a hint that the reaper had appeared behind you. So there is the gold token. Suddenly you're falling to the ground, the enchanted shaft of the reaper's famous magical arrow protruding from your side. You so. may still flee death. Perhaps. So we lived, which is the goal, so we have cleared this in the theory. For several moments you lay stunned and sprawled out on the ground. Eventually you hear footsteps approaching. Rallying your remaining strength, you wait until you sense the presence of your attacker right behind you. That's a fancy card. Suddenly you turn and strike. The so-called Reaper staggers back in surprise. You must be charmed indeed to still live, he says. My arrow has never failed me before. If you, you hear the familiar chant of the innkeeper as magic fills your veins, returning your vigor in a rush. So we get 50 health. Fine. The blade it is, then. The reaper readies his blades to finish you off. We must now fight the assassin of greed, which is a brimstone looking card. I mean, he is a boss. He's also, you know, the name of this challenge, being death itself, apparently. I wish my chair would stop rolling. Well, you're a fancy looking dude, aren't you? The Reaper. That's Messenger. The Reaper performs quick, heavy attacks. Use evade to avoid damage. Okay. Does he stun? Excuse me. Oh, hello. That's a point, we do look him in the eyes when we kill a man. Oh, hey bud. Oh, he does it twice in a row sometimes. Alright. Could you stop, please? He did it a third time. He's evolving. He did that through a stun, too. Hey bud. Alright, that was bull. Just gonna hit him? Alright. Alright. I hit the button to do the thing, it didn't do the thing though.
Hey, bud. Oh. I don't have the health to be messing around with this right now. There we go. All right. Could have done that way better, but we did it. We survived. I'm a little disappointed we didn't get the gold token. We're 20 max life off, but hey. The Reaper lies dead at your feet, but searching his body reveals few clues as to who sent him. You return to the inn to recover from your ordeal and plan your next move. See Even what death itself lies defeated, or at least its agents. Do not hurry to think yourself truly immortal. For surviving the Reaper's arrow, we get Spider Trap, Fabled Beast, Interception, General Store. We finally unlock General Store. We also get Harvest Blade, which looks like a heavy weapon, Broad Shield, and Tiger's Eye. And that was literally all we got for doing that, but hey. At some point in the future, we'll have to come back once we again to toward death. the end of our tale, and here, true magic begins. The gates have been opened, and now we must merely pass through them. Probably before doing the final challenge, I'll go back through and get uh, gold victory or gold medal token things for ones that I miss on the way there. Some interesting choices here. But that's it for now. Next time we're going to do justice because someone wanted to see justice. So thanks for watching. See you then.